Um, hello and welcome everybody to our Tips and Tricks webinar as part of our Equa webinar series. Uh, my name is Christoph Morbitzer. I am CEO of the Equa Solutions Group for the DACH area. Uh, today we want to give you an overview over helpful features on a more basic level. Uh, there are likely to be other events in the future in a similar format on more advanced user issues, so watch this space. And uh, we will do a live question and answer session at the end of the webinar. You will, however, also be able to ask questions during the webinar in the question pane, uh, which will then be dealt with uh, by my colleague Sven Mosberger. And uh, during the question and answer session at the end, uh, you may also raise your hand to ask an audio question. Uh, we will then unmute your microphone. And uh, uh, generally, we would like to ask you to stick to questions that relate to what we demonstrate today. Uh, obviously, you may be looking for a trick in an area that's of concern for you, uh, but that would really exceed the scope of uh, today's event. So let's get going. And um, the first thing I, I want to talk about is um, the fact um, that um, you can include uh, windows in IDA eyes, not only in the zones, but also in the building body. Um, well, normally what you do is you have your floor plan and uh, you know that you go into the palette and then you select windows and you, you include them in here. Uh, what you can also do is um, that you go to the 3D view and, um, and in here um, you now have also the option in the palette to include windows. And what I'm doing now is that I'm dragging uh, one window into the building body and um, I drag the second window into the same surface of the building body and um, afterwards I select both windows and with a um, with a right mouse click um, I open the context uh, menu and here I've got this grid option and uh, I can define the number of rows so this is two rows and a number of columns when I now say OK uh, they are all included uh, into as a grid onto this building body uh, I can do some amendments here when I hold down the control key. I can also move the row in vertical direction or I can also move columns in horizontal direction. I can also delete um, uh, certain windows if I want to do that and um, by, by this uh, make some more refined uh, uh, window grid definition. Uh, if I want to include now zones uh, I go normally to the, uh, as I normally do it on the floor plan and I draw my zone and uh, now I can see it in the 3D view and uh, when I open up the wall you can see that these windows have uh, automatically been included in the zone surface. Now uh, this approach has a, couple, has a couple of advantages. First of all when you have a very regular window grid you can obviously very quickly define the windows and then concentrate on the uh, on the zone uh, definition and uh, the second advantage is when I go back to the floor plan and for some reason I delete the zone uh, the window uh, remains and I can use it later on in my model um, again and um, there is actually when you go to help and uh, to support there is a download and info center and uh, when you go to documentation um, there is a document uh, that you see here, which I've already opened. Um, and uh, this gives you some more information of what you can, uh, in addition to, uh, do to what I've uh, shown you. And uh, for instance, you can uh, also attach a DWG or, um, uh, or a graphic file uh, onto the building body surface, which will help you as a template to, de to define uh, the windows. Um, you can also include different types of windows as you can see it here. You can also see the process how this has been built up. Um, and uh, finally you can also include um, uh, balconies uh, onto the building uh, onto the building body. Uh, it used to be that they were attached with the um, with the window shading but that doesn't really make sense because then uh, the window that's maybe located underneath that window is not taken into account. So now we've uh, we've moved this into the uh, into the building body area. Okay, so we are, we are staying with the 
windows for a bit uh, longer and uh, so I'm going back to Ida Eyes and uh, I'm opening up a zone and uh, you, you may have wondered what this more key is about uh, that you're seeing here in the in the opening uh, control and um, I'm trying to explain this with this little PowerPoint here um, what happens when you specify that a window is opened by 30% is that actually it's almost like a sliding door. The windows is slided open sidewise. So the effective height of the ventilation opening is the full height of the window. Uh, if you do have a situation like for instance with a, um, uh, with a tilting window, uh, the effective area would be this area up here. And uh, in the past, it used to be that you then needed to include two windows and you would control this upper part here uh, as part of the ventilation control. Uh, but now you have the option here in the more field to actually specify a maximum relative height. I can set this value here to 30%, which means when the window is open, uh, 100%, actually only 30% of the height are used for the definition of the ventilation opening. And what you can also do is that you can animate window ventilation. And uh, here I've prepared a little example. And you're seeing here, and I'm going to the 3D view. And um, I'm going to animation. And um, you have to lock the ventilation airflows before you start the simulation. So that's what I've done in this case. And um, now I'm going to show to start the animation and this is now 1st of January so there's not too much window ventilation going on but then I move into the summer and um, here I can see I've got different uh, uh, ventilation rates in the various zones because they have different uh, internal gains and uh, this is a very nice way of uh, presenting uh, this uh, result type. Okay, some more features when it comes to uh, to results analysis and results display. Uh, let's go to the to the details uh, view of the of the results and have a look at the main temperatures in this particular zone. And you know, when you click on the hyperlink, you can extract this this graph here. And um, I'm now interested in the operative temperature uh, that I have in this particular zone. And uh, I also want to have a look at it as a duration diagram. So um, I'll go to Calc and uh, select the duration option. And now um, the, the fairly obvious question in a, in a project meeting would be, well, how many hours do I have um, above, let's say, 26 degrees? Or how many hours do I have below uh, 23 degrees? Um, then you can, you can pretty good guess um, this value, but it cannot really define uh, the actual number of hours. But what you can do is that you set a, a right mouse click onto the graph and you go into properties. And uh, here in the general field, you have the option to say show time above, and I'm saying 26 here. And then I'm saying 23 for uh, show time below. And now it tells me that it's 420 hours above and uh, 1620 hours below. And uh, you also have the option uh, to um, sp uh, specify a weight value. So in this case, um, this, this were all the hours of the year, but I may be interested in, uh, in the time um, that, uh, that is only the occupied period. So here I can select the filter now and I say from uh, 7 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. And uh, it then uh, filters these hours and reduces the uh, duration uh, display. Uh, another option that I have is um, that I can uh, uh, open up a carpet plot of this display and now uh, this gives me information not only about uh, the temperatures that I'm reaching uh, but also for instance with the high temperatures that are indicated here in red uh, when they occur over the year but also when they occur uh, over the day. And uh, when I hold down the Alt key, I can also rotate this display and then have a look at this whole thing in, in 3D. OK. 
Okay. Um, the ah yeah. Um, the last thing I want to show you uh, was um, the the fact that you can also show the operative temperature for all the zones. Uh, we know that it's possible to drag and drop variables from one graph to the other, but that would take a lot of time for larger models. When I perform a right mouse click onto the legend down here, and I've selected the operative temperature, I can say uh, show uh, multi-zone in a, in a diagram, and I need to select the zones, and uh, now I can see what temperatures I'm getting in the various zones over the duration of the year, and of course I can zoom in as well if I, if I would like to. Okay, uh, the next point is when I go to the overview table, here we see the maximum temperatures that occur uh, in the zone, and you know that you can visualize them by clicking on this little uh, box up here, and uh, now I can uh, remove the cover of this model, and um, you can see here the temperatures in this particular zone, they go up to 38 degrees, which actually gives the impression that this zone, uh, the, the light blue one, uh, is actually fairly cool, but um, as you can see on the scale on the left-hand side, it's actually 30 degrees. Well, that's not a very fortunate display, and um, you cannot um, amend these figures here, but uh, there's a little trick. Uh, what you can do is you can copy these values and you can move, move to the general tab. And in here, now you, you can paste these values. And, um, and now I have the option uh, to say, well, this one is actually 32 degrees. I'm cheating a little bit and I'm visualizing these results. Uh, so now uh, it's a more appropriate uh, temperature, uh, more, more appropriate um, uh, color selection for the various uh, temperatures. What you have to be careful is um, above the color scale, you, there's still written cooling set points, so you would need to ensure that this is not uh, displayed in your report, however you want to use this, this type of um, result display. Okay, then we are moving on, we are staying with ventilation, but um, we're actually going to the to the zones now, and uh, so I'm opening a zone form. If I if I want to specify the mechanical uh, ventilation rates um, in Sweden, you normally design in liters per second per square meter. Uh, this is not the case all over the world. For instance, in Germany, uh, it's a lot more common to say cube meters per hour, and uh, there's a little trick when you click onto this hyperlink here, uh, you can see other units like air changes per hour is also quite commonly used. And uh, for this zone, I could now say this has uh, uh, 30 cube meters per hour um, as supply and as extract. And then uh, Ida Ice will show me um, what is the correspondent value in, an, in the various other units. And it will also transfer this figure uh, into this uh, input box that you see here. And uh, moving back to the um, uh, to the windows again, uh, you uh, have the option to specify integrated window shading, that would be a blind or a, or a curtain, and uh, external window shading, which would be like a brie soleil or a, or a side fin or whatever there is um, at the window. Now, what is um, not quite new, but fairly new, is um, that um, you also have the option now uh, to specify a semi-transparency for these objects. They used to be fully opaque in the past, uh, which, like, when this is a, a cloth material, uh, wouldn't really be uh, the case. And uh, this semi-transparency uh, does not only relate to the um, shading elements that you have at the window itself, uh, but when I go to side shading and orientation, I can um, uh, I can define here my polygons, and uh, down here on the left hand side, you see that you can specify semi-transparency. So let's assume that these would be trees, and there would be some sunlight uh, coming through this tree line. You can still define it. Uh, often asked question, you cannot alter this over the years, so if you want to define um, a summer simulation and a winter simulation with leaf trees, 
uh, you would need to run two simulation studies. Okay, we're moving on to another area and uh, this is now the construction attribution of particular zones. And uh, so I've got this little model here that you're seeing and um, um, you know, I can go into the general tab and uh, open up the surfaces and can, uh, can visualize the constructions that I'm having. So here for all the internal walls, uh, it's an interior wall with insulation. And, uh, but it's quite common that you want to alter this for certain rooms or for certain parts of the model. And um, it used to be in the past that you had to open up a wall and you had to change uh, the construction type and then you had to open up the correspondent wall. And uh, there's another trick actually. Um, like if I open up this wall here and I want to open up the wall uh, or the, the surface on the other side of the other zone, uh, I can uh, perform a double click on this surface and then it opens up the other surface. Uh, but that's a little side trick, that's actually not what I want to show you. But uh, what I really wanted to show you is that you now have the option to also do a construction attribution of various surfaces in the 3D view. And to do that I first need to specify which uh, uh, surface type um, I want to amend. So in my case it's the internal walls. And uh, now I'm including uh, the construction type internal uh, wall. Now I need to check what do I have in here. I have inter internal wall with insulation. So I want to uh, select in interior wall without insulation. And then this is included here in the, in the sidebar. And I can now uh, perform a double click uh, onto this uh, uh, item and uh, define that I want to apply this in various other uh, surfaces of my model. And uh, there's a couple of good uh, additional features. First of all, the other side, so the other zone is also automatically updated. And uh, if you do have a non-symmetric um, um, non uh, construction, it would also flip it. In this case, that's not necessary because it's symmetric, but uh, that's what would happen. Um, our next point is um, also fairly new and um, this relates to this uh, problem that you're seeing here. Um, you, you may be having, let's say, a building with an entrance area and then in the middle of the building there's a big atrium that goes all the way to the, to the top. And um, now, um, uh, obviously there would be a connection between these two zones and uh, with the um, Expert edition, you could uh, include a large opening in here and then these two, uh, there would be airflow between these two spaces. And uh, in the standard edition, there were some tricks how you could do that. You could, uh, for instance, include leakages and define them to be very big, but that's all a bit uh, difficult and you can't really see it in the model. And uh, what is fairly new, what you can do is that you go, uh, that you select two zones. I could have done this in the 3D view as well, but I'm doing it now on the floor plan. And um, again, I perform a right mouse click and uh, in this context menu, I can now merge zones. As you see, it's a better version, so it may not always work, but uh, it really works in most of the cases. And uh, when I now move back to the 3D view, I can see these two zones have been merged into one zone and uh, therefore um, there would be airflow um, into this atrium as well. Uh, going back to the floor plan, uh, that's a trick actually that doesn't really relate to eye to eyes, but it's a general trick that I myself only know uh, for not too long. Um, if I'm uh, going to this uh, part of my model now and when I, when I turn the mouse wheel I move up and down and uh, when I actually hold down the, um, uh, the, alt, uh, sorry, the shift key, and do the same thing, it will move me in the horizontal uh, direction. All right, the next trick that I'm showing um, uh, relates to the zone definition again. And I um, need to open up the 
corresponding model. Um, so here I've got your, your standard zone, you know this, and um, here I've created the same zone again, uh, but uh, it's, it doesn't really fall into the coordinate system, or doesn't really align with the coordinate system uh, that, um, that is specified uh, for, this, uh, for this model. And uh, when I actually open up this zone, um, and let me first show you how I've created it. So I go to a new zone, and what I've done is I've uh, first included a, um, uh, uh, a rectangle, and then I've, I've moved uh, the various uh, um, corner points to, well, I've done this a lot neater in the other model. I had a template that I've been using, but you, you get the principle. Um, so in this process, I've created this zone that you're seeing here. And actually, when I open up this zone, and especially when I open up the floor, you can see that this still is aligned with the overall coordinate system of the um, uh, of the um, of the model. And uh, this has um, can have quite significant implications. And uh, one important one is that uh, I couldn't apply the climate model now for this zone because although it's rectangular, it's, it's not really seen as rectangular by either eyes. But what you can do is uh, that you, that you um, hold down the Alt key and then select the zone. And then with this sort of uh, almost like a truck type uh, thing, you can position it uh, next, to, uh, next to a um, uh, surface of a building body. And um, if I have it like this now, I can open up the zone. And when I open up the, uh, the floor, you can see that it's, uh, it's now still um, with, the, uh, with the local coordinate system of the zone, and they can apply the climate model. Um, another issue is um, uh, related to the zone templates now. Um, so when I draw a zone, as I do it here now, and uh, once I confirm this with done, uh, all sorts of uh, information from the zone uh, template uh, is actually attributed to the zone. So when I open up the zone and uh, I have a look at the, at the occupants, um, you can see here for this zone we've got 8.7 uh, occupants. And uh, when I now amend the geometry of this zone, what actually happens is that uh, um, the, it doesn't relate to the original zone template. So when I open up this zone, uh, and have a look at the occupants, it's still this 8.76. And uh, But now, fortunately, there's a little trick. What you can do is you can select the zone, and you can also select uh, a zone template. So here I've got only one. And then I can specify that I want to reset the selected zone to the current template. And uh, once I've done this and have a look at the occupants, I can see now it's 17, well, around 17 and a half occupants. So the, um, the zone data has been adapted with respect to the zone uh, template. Right, we're getting towards the end now. There's a couple of things with BIM that I want to show you. Um, I need to find the correct model. Um, 3D construction attribution. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how to go. So you may have seen this one before. Uh, that's, um, um, an IFC model that we, that we use quite frequently and uh, a fairly new feature uh, is that you uh, cannot only, as you know it, select spaces and then say I want to um, I want to make a single zone or I want to make separate zones from every uh, marked IFC space. So, uh, you've seen this before, now I've got two zones in here. Um, but um, I also have the option now uh, to uh, say I want to make a separate zone from every uh, remaining IFC space, even if it's unmarked. And when I do this, it will now uh, create the zones. It takes a few seconds. And uh, when I now go to the 3D view and uh, go to show, and uh, visual filter and remove the IFC file. I can see, okay, here I've got all my zones and I didn't have to select them all uh, to create them. 
And the last thing I'm going to show you is, um, is related to shading objects that, that may be included. So we see here on the right hand side there's a little balcony and uh, we may want to include this balcony because uh, it shades the window that's located underneath. However, here's also this railing and uh, this will be reasonably expensive in terms of simulation resources, uh, but it, it doesn't really shade anything. Uh, so what I can do is I can select the IFC model and go to properties and uh, first of all I can define if I want to calculate the shading from this IFC file or and that's what I want to do is I can uh, I want to allow selection of components and once I've done this I can now uh, select the railing and delete this object and I could do it with the other uh, two as well. Right, we are at the end now with uh, slightly run over time. Uh, a couple of things um, um, that are uh, important for us that we would really like to point out to you. One is the process guide. Um, there is a getting started guide that you can start uh, where you can see uh, videos, you can go to help functions, uh, you, can, you can ask um, the process guide to bring you in either eyes to the part where you can amend uh, this, this, um, uh, the task uh, or where you can carry out the task that's related to these different items. Um, and of course we also have our forum and um, you enter the forum if you say support and ask a question and it will bring you right to the forum. Uh, you can ask a question up here, you can also key in a keyword so you may be interested in everything that's been written about VAV and uh, now you can see questions that have been asked before and answers that have been given. Um, we really hope that we create some sort of community feeling through our forum. So we would love you to ask questions, to give you information. Uh, and uh, we really hope um, it's, it's been very well received. Uh, but we hope that this will improve or increase um, in the future. And this will really be some platform where our users can exchange their ideas and uh, be inspirational to each other. Right, these were all the things that I want to show you. Um, we are now opening up the um, questions uh, session. We have a first question of uh, Ralf Füger. Uh, he asks, is it possible to change the area of the new zone after merging two zones? Oh no, it's not possible, sorry. <laughs> it's a reasonable new feature, so um, no, it's not possible to, to amend this afterwards. It's similar to what you, what you have from SketchUp. There is another one from David Sauerwein. Uh, he, asked, he asks whether there will be a short documentation of these inputs from today. Um, well, the, the, whole, the whole session is recorded. So um, you, you will afterwards receive a link uh, through which you can um, have a look at the recording again and, uh, and then uh, yeah, reiterate on uh, on what we've been doing today. And Eric Nilsson asks, uh, can you show again how you rotated the zone? So please repeat this. Yeah. So if, uh, I'll do it then. Just to be um, the basic model here. Uh, what you what you need to do is um, you need to hold down the Alt key and afterwards you click onto the zone and you keep it pressed and I don't know if it turns black for you now, it's uh, displayed black on, on my screen and uh, now I can sort of move it uh, to my new location and it also snaps, um, so you can see here now this has snapped now to the, uh, to the surface of the building body. Okay, and uh, Jan Kröger asks uh, how you can give a, a special construction uh, like like uh, wood frames, uh, wood framed wall. So if you if if your construction is not homogeneous, that's not homogeneous. Um, there's two different uh, things that you can do. Um, um, the the first option, I mean, obviously you would let's assume this would be one room. 
and um, obviously you would need to split up the surface into top surfaces. And uh, one option is that you open up the surface itself, so in this case the wall, and you go into the palette and uh, you select the wall part and uh, and then you draw a second surface and this could then represent the um, uh, the, the, the timber frame um, of this, um, of this uh, construction of the surface and but there's also another trick and you can also apply this like when you have a slope group for instance for the joists and uh, but when it comes to the uh, to the walls there's another trick um, uh, and this is that you include additional vertices into uh, into a surface and now I've got two different surfaces and I can attribute different constructions to these surfaces. And Eric Hortness asks um, uh, about the situation when you have uh, two zones uh, with an internal wall and a window in it. So uh, he writes, I presume it is enough to have a window on just one of the zones to get uh, daylight, for instance, in in from the one zone to another. Yes. But so he asked whether you could please comment on this and 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 on different problems that could mm -hmm. arise from it. Mm -hmm. uh, that that is correct. And um, actually, the the answer is that you must include a window or a door. Um, it also relates to doors only into into one surface. So um, I'm well I'm including this window now here. And um, when I open up um, this zone, uh, I can see my window in here, and I can I can also mend it because I've opened up the uh, the zone where I've included the window in the first place. And but when I open up the other zone, um, I need to check where the you can see here the window is displayed, um, but I cannot amend it because it's not been included in this zone. And what would be wrong and what you must not do is that you now draw a second window on top of this window here. Okay, and another question from David Sauerwein. So he asks, when zones are being merged, is it afterwards a single zone or are definitions being made still for every single zone separately? Mm. Yes, no, it's a single zone then. And uh, Claire uh, Miriole asks, can you, can you show what happened with the internal gains when you merge two zones? So actually, uh, okay. yeah, similar yeah. question. Um, when do you know that? Um, My actually, uh, I would try and, and, and have a look. I, I, I have a guess what will happen, but I'm not sure. I think we need to re-attribute, um, similar to what we've, what we've done before. Um, so, um, well, let's, let's do that. Uh, the safe way would, would be to, to re-attribute. Um, Right, so we had one occupant in this zone, and then we had. And you may may try to give two different schedules as well. Mm -hmm. Good one, yeah. And we've got two occupants in, in the other zone, and schedule now. And now I'm selecting these two and I'm merging them. And now, yeah, uh huh. So uh, you can see here now it, it has merged the occupants, but um, it was a bit confused with the schedules. So the thing to do is to, after you've done this, to select the um, uh, the zone template that is relevant for for the new zone that you have created, and apply this res reset selected zone to the current template. And Mariana Goyarzu asks, do you, do you need one building body for the entire building or one building body per floor? Um, it depends. Um, you can, um, you, 
Uh, well, first part of the answer is, or one part of the answer is that you, you don't need to define a building body for every floor. So I could say this building body here is, uh, is 10 meters uh, high. And uh, here in this building body, I can uh, have different floors, uh, floor levels. Um, you, you need different building bodies when when there's changes in the in the geometry of the building itself. So let's say I don't know what's called in English, but let's say that the building sort of steps back after 10 meters. Then I can go to the floor plan and. Um, go up to 10 meters and uh, in the palette here I've got not only the option to include uh, zones but also building bodies and here I can define a second building body now and uh, I'm defining this to be um, 15 meters tall and uh, now I've got two building bodies and actually either I will connect these two building bodies now to one overall building body so if I go to the floor plan and uh, go to level zero and uh, include a zone and um, say and that's another trick actually say that this zone should be going to the roof uh, of the building and you can see here uh, this zone um, has been extruded also into the second building body so they, uh, the two building bodies create one overall building body what you must not do is that they intersect so um, I couldn't have drawn this building body on the second building body on level zero and then extruded it because then either eyes gets confused where there's actually the boundaries of the building. Yes, and as Christmas is upcoming, Eric Horden starts with a wish list. Uh, he asks, when will you uh, release the multi-criterion optimization function to IDA? For instance, optimizing window area depending on both term load and the defined daylight level. Oh, well, before Christmas, but we're not telling you which one. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's 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 quite difficult to to um, give um, information about when we will be doing releases. Um, I've I've been a user myself, and I know that this is what you want to know, really. Uh, now being on the other side of the fence and working in a software house, I know that it's very difficult and, and uh, there may be issues coming up that you have to tie up resources in other areas that you didn't expect, but it's very important that you do that. Um, so the answer is really we're working on it, but uh, it's difficult to give a date. And another question from David Sauerwein. When radiation is going through several zones or levels, is it still vector-based radiation in the inside, or will it be just a factor in the side of a zone, in the inside of the zone? Yeah. I'm not I understand the question. When you interpret papers that it's regarding whether it's direction still with the radiation or Yeah, I think so. So, so the radiation keeps the direction, but but it will um, it will somehow come from the entire surface of the of the window and not exactly. and not only from the from the radiated part of it. Yeah. So there is a yeah. Exactly. But the radiation is kept until the the first opaque surface. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so it's a bit difficult to explain now. We have a slide that explains it quite well, but actually we're doing now that we're moving away from uh, standard questions. So right, we, we have this situation now, and let's let's assume that this would be one zone. I know it's not, but let's assume this would be one zone, uh, one small zone at the top and one smaller zone at the bottom. And now you have radiation coming in 45 degree into the zone. What will happen is that only a part of the um, uh, of the area where the two zones connect uh, will actually receive radiation, and uh, but this radiation is then still has a direction in the second zone, but it's distributed over the entire connection area. So actually, the radiation that you will get at the bottom will not be 100% accurate. Yeah, thank you all for watching, and uh, we hope that we see you again soon.